Hello and welcome to Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. This is our little 10 minute window to the rest of the world. And today's a very special episode. Because we're going to show you tips on how to throw a killer slumber party. We have to understand that a killer slumber party starts in an itinerary of events. In particular, party plans. Basically, it all starts at 12.06 when the party is first announced on a Friday afternoon. At lunchtime. Particularly because one of the girls, her parents, is going out of town. Sometimes to Australia. Last minute, usually it's a business conference or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing. And she's conference. left all alone at the house and told specifically not to have parties. New, this is usually followed by 12.30, where one of the guests feels a little awkward that the, the person didn't invite the new girl or the awkward girl. Look, what do you have against Valerie anyway? Hey, it's her problem she transferred here, not mine. Well, I'm going to ask her. Fine. I'm having a few girls over tonight, and I was wondering if maybe I you can't, could Trish. I, I'm sorry. Oh, come on. I have she heard. This puts a little bit of tension right from the very beginning. That's a really important tip. Make sure by 12.30 you exclude one person. Of course, after the school bell, you need to invite at least one more guest. About 3.02. This is an extra because usually one of your guests is not going to make it. Basically, it's a free kill to see early on in the movie. So, uh, you know, invite someone you don't really care for. Don't be that person. Don't take a party invitation at the last minute. Because you're the one who's going to find yourself alone in the locker room because you forgot your book. Or you have to go back to the classroom all because your, your homework was left in the desk. And yeah, and then all of a sudden the shadow's on the wall. Nobody noticed the killer's in the school, but you know, there they are. Now, at 3.30 p.m., which is usually about the time the guys are riding home in their 1982 Trans Am, when they find out about the party and they sneak in ideas to get there. Usually they find out through... The tramp's uh, big mouth. Yeah, speaking of, there are is a certain guest list that has to attend yes, the party. Guest list usually includes a tramp, a druggie or drinker, a cheerleader, a nerd, a good girl, and somebody's kid sister. Yeah. With an option for a goth girl. Goth girls are really hip now. Usually by 5.07, you have to go out to the garage to uh, get something, something or other, either start the grill or just basically to establish the fact that you uh, forgot to lock the door. It's not locked. Now at 5.09, you're going to need to wear something extremely skimpy and revealing as you go out to wave at the neighbor while you check your mail. Around 5.30, you have to hear a strange sound somewhere in the house and make sure you let your cat out of the closet. Ah! Whoa! Now at 6 o'clock, you're going to want to have all your guests be quiet Especially when your mother and father are calling in from Australia to check up on you. Now it's 6.43. That's when the tramp calls her boyfriend and the girls listen in and laugh. Love it too. You think I'm getting better? <laughs> now 7 p.m.'s come and gone and all the guests have arrived. Mm -hmm. But somebody usually brings something a little inappropriate. That or some kind of narcotics or drugs of some sort. Oh God, anybody got any tranks? <laughs> also, for whatever reason, you always have to wear some of the sexiest underwear in front of your straight friends. <laughs> On a side note, if it's a pool party, someone ends up wearing a bikini like this. Now it's 7.27. That's usually the time when the guys that talked about going to the party and sneaking a peek usually get at the party and they sneak a peek no. through the window. And someone usually says something stupid like, I can't believe girls really do this. Because usually they're doing something embarrassing like dancing with their tops off or something like that. Oh yeah, that's just an absolute staple. They always do that in those movies. Thunder's coming. Uh oh. Let's go, let's, let's go scare the girls. <laughs> At 7.29 is usually when the pizza arrives. 30 minutes or less, you know that when party guests get there at 7, you gotta call for it right away. And for whatever reason, when they have like 7 or 8 girls at the party, and they know the guys are gonna come, like 3 or 4 guys, they always have one pizza. I never figured that out. Even if you're just 5 to 8 girls, one pizza, that's like, what, 1.5 slice per girl? Seriously? At a slumber party? With an option for a dead pizza guy. That's true. <laughs> 
Back to the piece is gone. That's when someone usually makes a suggestion of something inappropriate like a Ouija board. A Ouija board? Let's shake up the spirit world. Or tarot readings. Something that kind of causes the music to go boom. Usually it's the goth girl that does that. God bless the goth. Now here's a very hot tip. If you really want to survive a slumber party massacre movie, don't be the one to suggest to go out to the garage and get something, or go to the store and pick something up on a beer run. I'll be right back! Now, usually by 8.02, after the first person's gone missing, it's time for someone to take a shower. It's just... It's just mandatory in these kind of movies. Now at 8.30, this is when the tramp goes out to talk with her boyfriend. Talk. Now this usually ends up with the option of both of them or one of them being killed. And the girl runs in the house covered in the blood of her boyfriend and then they start accusing her of being the killer. Now at 8.45, this is usually when the first body has been discovered. Right. And of course, the power goes out. And the phone lines out. Hello? Snippy, snippy. Snippy, snippy. <laughs> Now another thing about this is the girlfriends usually find out that one of their boyfriends is sleeping with one of the guests. Just to add a little bit more drama to the problem. Of course. Billy and I, I mean, hey, you don't have an exclusive on Billy. He does what he wants. I thought you were my friend. What does that have to do with anything? Now the party always happens during a thunderstorm when the power completely goes out. Oh, and by the way, you should only have one flashlight for every four girls. It's a rule. Never investigate the house in one big group. No. Always investigate in pairs and make sure that you hate each other. Yes. Goth with the cheerleader. Oh yeah. On a side note, make sure your kitchen is well stocked. There's plenty of sharp things. Now it's 8.50, okay? The one thing you do not want to do is answer the door when the creepy neighbor comes by to check and see if you're okay. Because usually he has a bad reputation in the neighborhood of being like a Satanist or he's involved with some kind of cult. My dad said that nut was somehow in league with the devil. So some, there's some kind of dead animals hanging in his basement, you know that. He's a creepy neighbor for a reason. He lives alone for a reason. Okay, remember that. Don't let him in. The most important thing you have to remember above all the tips you've heard tonight, that if you're going out to investigate a strange noise, never put on appropriate clothes. Get the pants, get the coat, even if it's raining out, just go out, lingerie, underwear, as is. Oh my god, our clothes, they're still upstairs! You really want to go back up there? It's very important to the fifth reel in the movie. It's better that way. We're experts. Never have the common sense to fight together. It doesn't work. Just scatter, hide, and scream. And always run upstairs. Never run out the front door. No. It makes less sense that way. It does. And on the flip side, if you want to survive, mm -hmm. be the one who's smart enough to put on their coat and actually ask the creepy neighbor for help. Because the creepy neighbor usually ends up being either an undercover cop yep. or a Vietnam veteran who eats MREs all day long. Exactly. With a lot of guns. If someone messed up like that, you want on your side. Oh yeah. Lock and load, baby. Now kids, remember there's one good tip to surviving a killer slumber party. Knowing how to use power tools. Well... It's midnight. Yeah. And everybody is dead. The neighbor's wounded. Cops haven't shown up. The neighbors haven't heard any dying or screaming. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of blood in your pool. Usually a body floating in it. My name's Andy. And my name's Drew. And that's, that's how you know, know you've had a killer slumber party. party. See you next time.